Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. And joining me right now, I have Randy Lips. He is the CEO of OmniCell. So Randy, great to have you here. Oh, so great to be with you. Okay, so for those who might not be familiar with OmniCell, what do you guys do? Oh, we do medication management all through the continuums, robotics, software, everything. Getting meds to the right place at the right time. Okay, what I love about this is that you guys have this really compelling vision for the future. So this autonomous pharmacy. Describe to me that vision because I think that's really cool. Well, we know how robotics are impacting every Everything that we do today and it should impact pharmacy because pharmacy needs the safety and the accuracy so if you think of the autonomous pharmacy as the movements of meds from one location to the next or various locations even inside of hospital without a human being touching them and then on top of that is layered the software that manages all that so meds enter the system stay within the automation platform and don't exit till it gets to the patient all right, this is actually really pretty revolutionary. Now, I sat in a session yesterday at the summit that you guys hosted, and they were talking about how it was something low, like 25% of a pharmacist's time is spent doing clinical work, and that's it. How does something like this, where you're automating the actual like movement of drugs through a hospital system, how does that free up the pharmacist to do other things, like deal with patients and work with other clinicians? Yeah, not only pharmacists, but all clinicians, even nurses, have been burdened down by regulatory requirements, uh, manual requirements that really don't have anything to do with what they went to school with or don't really have any outcomes on patient care but just have to do with administrative workload. That burden is so high today that it's 75 percent of what a pharmacy does in a major hospital major provider. So instead of a clinician working at the height of their license making big decisions on how to improve patient care they're filling out paperwork, they're doing basic checks, things that automation could do for them even better mm -hmm. than a human being. I mean, you touched on a couple of things there. I think, you know, obviously um, reducing errors, reducing the administrative burden. At a time like this in healthcare, when we're seeing the like health systems kind of, I mean, some of these, some of the smaller rural health systems shutting down completely, the bigger health systems, you know, buying up the smaller ones. How does the role of the pharmacy fit into all of this? And how does this different future where things are automated and you're, you're really leveraging technology play a role? Yeah, well, technology is, you know, it, it's getting input into our lives everywhere, and healthcare is behind. So what that drives is poor allocation of resources, very intelligent, uh, very sophisticated women and men who are working in pharmacy are counting pills. That doesn't really, uh, that's not a good cost-effective use of their time. Right. So we need to free them up. The, 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 the idea is that uh, we should free pharmacists up from the basement in the hospitals and from behind the counter and get them engaged with the patient directly and have all that stuff in the background, have it be done automatically. Physically move meds and all the software necessary to move them in the right place at the right time. Let that happen on its own. Let's not employ people to just uh, do the basics. Let the pharmacist run at the top of their license. So we've got a lot of innovation folks out there watching. Yeah. Um, so t talk to me, I guess, about what you need in order to have have some of the solutions that you guys develop at OmniCell um, get better uptake within the hospital pharmacies. I mean, like, what kinds of things could happen to reduce the friction of implementing some of this tech? Well, part of it is uh, we're trying to create an industry movement mm -hmm. and get people to say, this is going to happen. Let's put a stake in the ground and see this happen in the new, near future. Because we, we get caught in healthcare doing very good incremental things, but really don't lead to an ultimate solution. Hospitals and healthcare are really poor at adopting technology. It's very difficult. And so if we can agree on what the goal is as an industry, then we can arrive there. And so most of the change, you know, it, there aren't technical hurdles. There aren't really a lot of software hurdles. The hurdles are all in our mindset and how quickly and important it is to get there and get ourselves focused on making this happen as an industry and for us as a company as well. Say a little bit more about the mindset that needs to change. So what are we changing from and what are we changing to? And is it at the highest level? Is it the executives that need to change their mind? Or is it more with you know, nurses who've got to be more open-minded or the pharmacists themselves who really have to carry that mantle and, and drive that movement? I mean, what do you think? Well, part of what really makes uh, healthcare move slower is they're conservative. And we want healthcare to be conservative. You know, the first part of the oath, Hippocratic oath is first do no harm. And so one way not to do harm is not to change. So that's kind of, that entropy is kind of built into the system. But you have to have a clear roadmap 
of really what the autonomous pharmacy is, what are the steps to get there, and uh, how can you start preparing you for this. So if you embrace it, and the industry creates the roadmap to get there, then you need to just join on and get with it. Instead of just trying to operate in sort of a, a single institutional fashion or, uh, you know, this is the way we've always done it, those kinds of things really slow us down in any industry. But in healthcare, it's, it's got to be something we want to do, and it's got to be something we're focused on. Tell us a little bit about OmniCell. I was tipped off that there's a good Genesis story. So when did you guys start? I mean, and, and tell us a little bit about how you got founded. Well, this is a family story. Uh, cool. my, uh, my fifth child was born in the NICU with a lot of issues. And so I was sitting in the NICU and noticed the burden. The nurse who was dedicated my daughter at that time uh, had of doing her job. Her job wasn't all the clinical things she needed to do. It was all these gathering of resources and, you know, uh, manually writing things down, and, and, and it was just burdensome. Instead of sort of the system, system supporting the nurse and doing her job and enabling her to do the job, it was she had to go gather her resources wherever she could and then apply them uh, to get my daughter well, which she did. And then the next nurse would come in and he or she would do the same, they, except they would take a different path to, to getting those resources together. So there had to be a better way. And so that is part of our mission, find the better way, admit there's a better way. And, and that means for us, uh, saying some great technology we might have today might not be the way in the future. We have to get rid of that and move on to the next piece. I love that. I like this idea of, you know, taking out what's not working and putting in what is. Right. Randy, pleasure to talk to you. Oh, it's my privilege. And uh, let's go. Autonomous Pharmacy. I go, baby. It. Oh, my God. Go, baby. I love it. The movement has started. You've seen it here first. I'm Jessica DeMasa. Thanks so much for joining us.